So with that being said, uh, I would like to first talk to you, doctor, um, about your educational background and also about your work experience. Could you uh, first please describe your educational background? For the stenographer's purposes, if you could move the mic up a little bit so that we can. How's that? Good. That's good. Now let's talk about John Jay College. Is there a reason why, after obtaining your bachelor's degree, you decided to uh, study to uh, get your master's at John Jay College? Uh, I was interested in pursuing uh, studies either in psychology or law. And John Jay College at that time was the only program in the nation that a program in forensic psychology. Okay. And in my opinion, other people's opinion is one of the prominent institutions in criminal justice in the country. Okay. And after receiving your uh, degree, your master's degree from John Jay College, uh, you talked about going to Old Dominion University. In Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. In between that time, what was there any work experience in between that time? Um, yeah, I worked on a number of projects with law enforcement corrections. I was an intern for the Department of Corrections for New York City. I also worked on some projects um, from related to grants from at Albany, which involved patrolling with police officers in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I was a staff assistant at Patient University for a number of years, where I helped them uh, with their doctoral program and selecting candidates for the doctoral program. That was before my, my doctor, beginning my, beginning my doctoral studies. Okay. So you, you decided to go to Old Dominion to get your uh, PhD, and what was the program that you uh, entered into at Old Dominion? It was, it was the Industrial Organizational Psychology program. Okay. Could you describe for the panel what exactly that means? Sure. Um, IO Psychology is especially urban psychology. There's about four or 5,000 people with a background in IO Psychology in the country. The focus there is taking psychological principles and ideas and applying to the workplace organization. So my primary area of study was personnel psychology. <coughs> Things like training, testing, selection. Look at what we call the micro approach organization, um, involving people in the organization, selection issues, things like that. Performance appraisal, job analysis. I also had a minor in organizational psychology, kind of looking at the bigger picture. Organizations, how they function, like culture, climate, leadership, motivations, things such as that. Okay. And where do you where are you currently employed? I'm currently for, um, employed as a professor at Buffalo State College in Buffalo, New York, which is part of the State University of New York program. And what type of course load, uh, be it part-time or full-time, do you engage in? Then? Yes, full-time every semester. My responsibility to the college are teaching course courses. It's predominantly in the graduate program. We do a lot of work with students in terms of research. Um, other responsibilities include service to the college, the sitting on committees, and also it's an expectation of service to the community. Okay. Now, in addition to having a full load at Buffalo State University, have you engaged um, in other activities locally in the Buffalo City area? Sure. Um, based on my background and my experience, I've been invited by the Sheriff's Department to offer trainings to their officers at their holding center downtown, at an Albion Correction Facility, which is the county um, state jail. Um, I've also been involved in the New York State Employee Assistance Program, um, gone around the state, um, done training, and um, taught the people related to that. So there's lots of the community. I helped uh, the Sheriff's Department develop a chaplain's program for their officers. <clears throat> we held conferences for a number of years that looked at workplace wellness issues for law enforcement corrections of first responders. We had a weekend retreat. Our last one was a weekend retreat. We invited 30 couples. They consist of law enforcement officers, firefighters, correctional officers. Free charge for them to spend a weekend just talking on couples issues, communication issues that realizing the job had an impact on marriage relationships and those professions. We're also involved in something called the West New York Stress Reduction Program, which is a group of volunteers that come together and help first responders. I mean, first responders from firefighters, law enforcement, CEOs, who may have been in traumatic instances or events. And we meet with them soon after the event to try to help them understand what's happening to them and, I wouldn't say neutralize, but kind of help them make sense of what happened. It's not counseling, it's more educational type of, of environment to make them understand what they've been going through as a result of the traumatic event. OK. 
Okay. Now, in addition to testifying uh, here today, have you testified in any proceedings like this in the past? I was once asked to serve as a witness and did in St. Louis, Missouri, as part of um, the Rare Institute. There was a, I, 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 something about corrections. It was a few years back, but there was a series of four, four meetings they had, uh, St. Louis and other areas, and they was trying to understand what are the issues that <laughs> we're going through from the inmate's perspective, also perspective, administration perspective. That's the only time I've been like this before, and that was before a panel of people also, I think about 10 or 12 judges that we presented material to. It was myself and two, a correctional officer and administrator from the Midwest. And what organization was that? I think it was the Vera Institute. I have to go back and check my papers. I think they were the ones that organized it. Um, but they had got my contact information through the National Institute of Justice. Okay. Now, have you also been involved in the National Institute of Justice? I have. I, I served as a visiting fellow for them. Let, let's let backtrack a little bit. Explain to the panel what the National Institute of Justice is. Um, the Department of Justice has a lot of agencies, um, the DEA, FBI. NIJ is kind of the research arm for the Department of Justice. So their responsibility is to take laws and funding and develop to the grant opportunities for agencies. So. Um, they do all the research, they control the research really for the agency to, to see if certain things are happening in the community or in institutions um, have an impact on what's going on. So they had a program a few years ago called um, CLEPS. It's an acronym for Corrections and Law Enforcement Family Support Program. Um, because I had worked on a number of grants and in research in the area on working family issues with law enforcement, I was invited by the agency to come and serve as a visiting fellow which means I lived in D.C. for a while and helped them organize the grants that they were working on. My responsibilities in that was travel around the country to all the different organizations that received grants, and there were about 35 or so. California, Arkansas, New York City, New Jersey, Washington State, um, Virginia, Tennessee, and meet with people who, who uh, received grants and help kind of solidify or make sense out of what was happening in that grant process. Their question was, did all this money that we spend, millions of dollars over the past three, four year period, make a difference? So try and understand the programs that were developed, what impact they had, and maybe all suggestions on how to make these programs better and more useful to the people using them. Okay. Now you you had mentioned there's there were about thirty five organizations that received grants and you and you threw out some state names. Are you talking about states that received grants, municipalities that received grants? <laughs> That department wrote a grant, received funding to do the research they wanted to do. Another one is that in New Jersey, the Department of Corrections received money also. Um, so it wasn't really the state, maybe it was, but it was more of the agency, more, more at, at a state level. Governmental agencies? Yeah, yeah. A Tennessee Sheriff Association was a recipient. In some cases, it was academics who wrote the grant to receive the funds to work with agencies and conduct the research or do surveys or implement the program. So you weren't involved in the grant writing or, or applying for the grant. What was your role in that regard? Well, prior, to, prior to me getting involved as a fellow, I did write, write and receive funding for several grants that I wrote. And as part of that work I did, that made them interest in me and helping them further. But my job was, in one sense, to review grant applications to see if they should receive funding. Um, another one was, in this sense, to synthesize or to kind of make sense out of all the funding activity that was happening. To see what, to try to understand the process and how to make it better. Okay. So, in addition to being a visiting fellow at the National Institute of Justice, were you also a member of their peer review panel? Right, and that was where I reviewed other people's grant proposals to see if they were viable options and they should receive funding for the research they wanted to do. I also then, on Jay, um, developed a national conference. They did a text that's a few years back, um, right before my visiting fellowship which brought together experts and researchers and people involved in field stakeholders together to talk about family issues and law enforcement and corrections. And is that the steering committee that, that you reference in your CV? Okay. Uh, at Buffalo State University, uh, are you involved in the employee assistance or have you been involved in the employee assistance program? Yeah, I was. I was a state employee assistance program for a number of years. Um, the way the model works in the state, we have volunteers on campus who play that role. It's a joint labor management kind of committee. So um, people who are at the institution serve as internal consultants to provide support to employees who may be having problems related to the workplace or personal problems. And all will be 
AAP is basically to try to help the employee out to get them back to be a good functioning employee. Again, it's not counseling, it's more of a referral program. So if someone came to me and said, I got a problem, my elderly mom lives in Albany, I'm missing work two days a week to go visit her and take care of her, my job would be to make identify agencies in Albany that may assist that person's elderly parents so they would be traveling back and forth. So it was a referral. Here are some agencies to look into. You know, that's how it's done, but it's not therapy there. So it, your degrees and your, in your education and your work history is in psychology. Um, are you what somebody would commonly refer to as a, as a treating psychologist, somebody that sees patients, or is, is your work different? My work is different. I'm not a licensed psychologist, and that's not uncommon. Um, a licensed psychologist, I can't even call myself a psychologist in the state of New York. That's controlled by licensure. That means somebody's taken a certain course load, has so many years of experience, and passed a written exam by the state. So typically, someone's a counseling or clinical psychologist will get licensed in the state. Um, I even know some clinical psychologists who are not licensed, they're primarily research and teachers. So I, I would define myself as more of a researcher and a teacher. Okay. Although I mean, some call myself a psychologist, I can't legally put that on a business card. In the state of New York. Right. Okay. Now, uh, could, would you agree that you could even further define your specialty and even more narrow your specialty to a specific area? I think so. I think in every field, just like the lawyers, the label lawyers, lawyers, whatever, even with psych, in IELTS psychology, people have their, their niche. Um, I would say in IELTS psychology, my comfort zone is things like performance appraisal, job analysis, needs, and ex needs assessment for training, definitely survey development and survey work. In your occupational health psychology, I think I have some knowledge of stress and stress issues related to law enforcement and corrections. So I would feel comfortable working in those areas. Okay. Um, at, at this point in time, I would offer Dr. Del Prino's testimony uh, in the field of family and stress issues related to law enforcement officers. I think that his qualifications and work experience would qualify him to be an expert in this area. Any objection? Dr. Del Prino, the Pennsylvania State Corrections Officers Association uh, retained your services. Um, to perform some tasks for them, do they not? Yes, they did. Okay. What was the assignment that PSCOA asked you to complete? Um, this time was a phone call in October of 2010, where um, I got a phone call and was told that the association was interested in doing some statewide survey of its members. We had some discussions on the phone back and forth, and finally there was a visit that happened in the middle of late October. Um, the way it's explained to me, the Associated wanted to do a survey of all its members to identify if some of the issues they thought were important to Association members was really important and try to quantify that in some way. We had meetings to discuss that. I think I traveled in, like I said, late October. And I kind of defined it this way. I said, you know, before we go and do the survey, it may make sense to really see if these are really important issues to your membership and what other issues are really important to them. So I suggested doing focus groups as a way to kind of identify what was really interested or interesting or important to his membership and make sure that what the association or those was important was really important to the membership. So I was asked to come in and run a series of focus groups to identify for officers and their spouses what were the issues that they were facing or important to them related to career corrections. Okay, so let's backtrack a little bit. Um, when they say, when the PSCOA had said to you, um, we want to try to confirm issues that we believe are important to its membership. Uh, did it specify the issues, or how, how did that? No, no, not initially. They just said, you know, they were, they understood from talking to members if things are important to them. Did they seek your advice on how they should do that? Yes. Okay. And is that when you said to them, focus groups is one of the first steps? It's a good place to start to make sure what you think you're talking about is what your members are also talking about to confirm that you're tapping the right areas, okay. content areas that you want to address. Okay. After you were, uh, had these discussions with PSO, PSCOA, what was the first thing that you did or advised the PSCOA to do? What was the first step? Well, once we 